Okay, well, thank you very much for everyone uh, for coming today. So um, I'm here with uh, my colleague Rosie Morris and we're going to give you some feedback from the Icicle PD study, which a lot of you have been part of over the last few years. So for those of you that don't know, um, Icicle PD stands for Incidence of Cognitive Impairment in Cohorts with Longitudinal Evaluation in Parkinson's Disease. And as you can see from this picture, there's lots of different parts to the study. So we've got clinical exams, blood tests, brain scans, we've got the Icicle Sleep Study and the Icicle Gait Study, which Rosie will be talking to you about a little bit later on. And we've also got um, some measures of cognition and quality of life. And it's been ongoing for um, six years now. And we invite participants to come back every 18 months to do these assessments. So at assessment one, we had 158 participants with Parkinson's disease and 99 healthy controls. And as you can see from the graph, most people have come back um, each year. Um, at assessment four we're about halfway th through those and we've just started assessment five so that's um, 72 months after diagnosis. And what have we found from the ICICLE study? Well actually we found lots of different things so we've got a number of publications that um, go across our different research areas including gait, sleep and cognition. And I'm going to talk to you about um, a small part of the research that we're doing. So I've been looking at um, memory and quality of life, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So the parts that I'm um, going to talk to you about are cognition and quality of life. And I'm just going to explain what I mean by these. So quality of life is difficult to measure because it encompasses lots of different things so quality of life might be dependent on good health good psychological well-being and good social functioning but it can mean lots of different things to different people and it can um, take into account the environment um, and the people and places that you interact with so in Parkinson's disease, other studies have found that um, health problems, disease severity and disability have all affected quality of life. Uh, depression, anxiety and coping skills have affected psychological aspects of quality of life. And friends, family, finances, the environment, so whether you're near good hospitals and so forth, and culture have also been associated with um, social aspects of quality of life. And as many of you know, uh, we do lots of tests with you and we don't just test your memory. So memory is one of the things that we test. Um, but if you look at these, um, these pictures here, there's lots of other things that we test as well. So we also have tests of uh, reasoning and problem solving skills. We ask you to name words beginning with a certain letter of the alphabet we get you to um, draw pictures and we've also asked um, measured people's concentration and attention um, by using different computer tests and we've also got some standard pen and paper tests that we compare these to in the clinic so as i say it's not just memory it's um, concentration um, language skills and also your ability to reason and problem solve that we look at so if we compare those with no cognitive problems and those with mild cognitive problems, we can see that there's a difference in quality of life. So on this scale here, the higher a participant scores on the scale, this indicates poorer quality of life. And those with no cognitive problems have fairly stable quality of life um, across the three assessments over three years. Whereas we can see by the blue line, uh, those with mild cognitive problems, their, um, their scores increase. So their quality of life declines uh, slightly over the 36 month periods. Although, as you can see, this is quite a subtle difference. So I wanted to have a look at what was driving this. So is it actually cognition that's making the difference or is it maybe something else? So these are all predictors um, of poorer quality of life over the three year period for our cohort. So we found that women tended to report poorer quality of life, 
Younger participants reported poorer quality of life. Um, participants with more Parkinson's medication and declining motor symptoms, so their motor severity is getting worse over time, and those with low mood also predicted poorer quality of life. However, we also found some protective um, factors. So people who had spent more time in education, for example, they'd seem to report better quality of life. And also time. So if everything else stayed the same, then um, participants' quality of life would improve over time, uh, which, is, which is quite interesting. And I wanted to have a look at do the, do the different measures of cognition that I mentioned earlier, do they actually affect quality of life? So I first looked at a brief measure that we use in the clinic and I found that this did um, contribute towards poorer quality of life. However, it was a, a very small uh, uh, factor. Uh, it didn't have very strong, um, it wasn't a very strong predictor. And if we look at those with um, mild memory problems or mild cognitive problems, these participants also seem to have poorer quality of life. But if we have a look at the different tests that we use, it's actually concentration that seems to have the biggest effect. So comparing the three different models, uh, the three different types of tests of measuring cognition, um, people who have poor concentration and as their concentration declines over time, these are the ones that seem to have the poorest quality of life. Okay, so, but does actually, does this matter? So I wanted to find out if um, these differences in quality of life and cognition, does it actually have an effect on, on individuals? Does it matter to them? Or is it something that, um, that the results just come out with? So I interviewed 18 people with Parkinson's and their carers and to find out what they thought about cognition. And we had quite a mixed result. So for some people, cognition seemed to have a big effect. So for example, one person said that concentration really affected his reading. Um, somebody else said that they can't remember um, all the films that, that they've watched. Uh, the, the plots are different and um, they can't remember what was happening. So watching the same film over and over, it seems very fresh. Um, other people described it as being very frustrating. Um, Whereas some people thought, actually, it wasn't as bad as what I thought it was. Um, and some people thought that um, de the thought of dementia was quite frightening um, because it was an unknown quality and they weren't sure what was going to happen in the future. So these are some concerns about people's memories. But actually, n there were some, um, some positives about the effects of Parkinson's and cognition. So, for example, people were talk about different coping mechanisms and how they coped with cognition and Parkinson's. And overall, the results were quite positive. So one person said that you have to appreciate the lows before you appreciate the highs. So although things were a little bit more difficult, uh, they've learned to appreciate things a little bit more. And we had somebody else who talked about how you realise how lucky you are and how your health is more important um, compared to material possessions. Um, we had other people who were talking about um, social support, so the carer being a real, um, a real source of support. So one person saying that the wife's a great coper and she stays positive all the time and that really helps him to stay positive as well. Um, and somebody else uh, talked about how, yes, I've got Parkinson's, but actually I get on with life and I'm doing fine, which is a real positive message. So in conclusion, um, quality of life is affected by Parkinson's. So we have some worries and difficulties that can tip the balance between good quality of life and bad quality of life. But we also have some protective factors in there. So um, increasing time as people start to cope with having Parkinson's and cognitive impairment, their quality of life gets better. And also protective factors like good social support and help from family and friends seems to help um, protect quality of life as well. So offsetting the problems with, um, with cognition and attention and concentration are these protective factors. So thank you very much and I'd just like to pass you on now to my colleague Rosie.